This is the Total Freedom Podcast, presenting number one best-selling author, Christopher Duncan, bringing you proven strategies to free your time, free your mind, and free your income, so that you can do more of what matters most. Learn more at ChristopherMDuncan.com. Hey, Freedom Business Builders. Uh, welcome to another episode of Total Freedom Podcast with your host, Christopher Duncan. Today, I'm so honored to be here with uh, Laurie Harder, who's she just does so many things. I mean, we were trying to before the show how to figure out how to introduce you, and we decided on the self-love expert, self-made millionaire, successful entrepreneur. She's a network marketing professional, an author, a cover model, three-time fitness world champion, and she does so many different things, including we're going to be in a movie together, uh, which is going to be pretty cool. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Right on, and welcome to the show, and thank you for spending some time with us. So, I mean, I'd love you to do a much better job at introducing you than I did to the audience because it's you've just got so much going on. And when I was I was looking at your YouTube channel and I was looking at what what you're about, and I'm just I'm just so impressed to to see the scope and the range that you have of the different things you're doing. It's very unusual to see somebody be able to do it across different different areas. Typically, people are very stuck, and I know I am. So I'm pretty impressed. So do you want to just give us a, a little bit about who you are and uh, what it is that you love? Mm. Well, thank you again. Um, and thank you for that. I really, um, you know, I think that we're all so diverse and a lot of the things that you saw were done over a long period of time because <laughs> it's kind of like we go down one area and it opens another door to something else, right? So for me, a lot of it started in fitness. Mm -hmm. um, I was um, an overweight kid. I struggled with my weight my entire life. So that um, I really wanted to prove that it wasn't about genetics because that's what I heard my whole life. Oh, you're going to get literally, I heard this from my whole family, just wait, you'll get fat too. Oh, you're going to gain weight. And, and I, I remember there was a point where I was like, no, this is not going to happen to me. So I started really researching. So fitness is what really brought me into all of these other avenues. And I realized that even if you have the most fit body or you feel amazing, um, you're not always going to be happy in everything. So for me, it's like I thought this fit body was the answer to everything. And I get there and I realize, wait a minute, why am I still not happy or fit, feel fulfilled? And um, so I really wanted to be able to uh, hit on all aspects of what, what actually makes people happy. So that's what I do. I like to maybe keep it foundationally in moving your body in fitness and what you're feeding yourself, but not just what you're feeding yourself, um, obviously through food, but your mindset. What do you believe? What are your beliefs? What are you, you know, because in order to change the body, we have to really look at what we're thinking, what we're, um, who we're hanging around, what we're reading, what we're doing. There's just so much to it. So that's kind of where that whole spectrum of um, self-love uh, specialist and fitness expert and all of those things come in is because I just dive into whatever I'm getting blocked on. So, right. And they always say that they say we teach best, which what we need to learn. And, yeah. and that's, uh, that's a huge thing for me. Cause I, I need to learn more freedom right now. I'm <laughs> myself stuck back into doing and doing and doing, but we all know, uh, that happens. So tell me a little bit about that, that move. I mean, the, you wanted to prove people wrong. And I, I think every entrepreneur, has these, these moments where it's, you know, they really just decide inside them. And all the listeners, I know that they're about to go through that or have just gone through it. So that point, we just go, you know what? It's not genetics. It's not this. I'm just going to go and I'm going to prove everyone else wrong. I'm going to do it. I'd love to figure out what was going on for you then so we can kind of recreate it for everyone else. You know, it was really interesting because you have to, you have to look around you and see who's done it before. Um, I think that's a really big thing. There was a turning point for me. I was 13 years old uh, and I was raised in a really strict religion. So I was only allowed to, and I'm from a very, very small town. So in my particular religion that I was in, there was only like two other girls who were my age. So I didn't really, I was really in this bubble. I didn't really know what was outside of that. And I um, had made this new friend who lived a couple hours away and um, she was still in my church, so that was okay. And I went to her house for the week. So it was the first time, because she lived far away, that I had gotten completely outside of my bubble into someone else's. So her family um, was really fit. They were really active. They ate healthy food. And I remember going there, and it was like the first night, uh, you know, we had this healthy dinner. And, and after dinner, I was like, when do we have our snacks? And she's like, what do you mean snacks? <laughs> and I was like, well, don't you eat snacks after dinner? And she's like, no, we're done eating after dinner. And, I, and to, I know this sounds crazy, but to me, I had this moment of, wait a minute, 
So people don't sit and eat and watch TV after dinner. Like they were super active yeah. at home. I lost like five pounds on this week of just being active, eating super healthy. I, I felt so good. I really started to like just see what it could feel like to um, like yourself and to be active and to have a ton of energy. So that was honestly the first glimpse that I had ever had of wow. what that feels like for a solid week. So wow. for me, and what happened, right? Like, let, let's really look at what happened. I got outside of my bubble. I, I got into someone else's life. I got to see how things were different. I got to feel it for a whole week. So that just made me gain so much perspective that if I really start researching uh, more on health and fitness and movement and just what else is out there, what could happen? So it's kind wow. of like that, that just carried with me my entire life of, okay, let's get outside of your bubble. Let's see what's actually happening for this person or this person or were they able to change their background? What a blessing. Mm. What a blessing. Like I'm that. so grateful to yeah. this day. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. So that's what was coming through for me as well. And, and that's, uh, that's amazing. I, I love your concept of getting people outside of their bubble. Uh, what is your take on people's bubble? And, and it seems that you've got some insight that it actually keeps people stuck. Mm. You know, I think it's really easy to, I lived in the Midwest for a really long time. I just actually recently moved to California in the last four years. Um, are you and Kelly? Whereabouts are you? I am Santa Monica. We're, we're likely right now just down the road from each other. So ah, it's really? so funny. Yeah. <laughs> we You're could have done this in person. In person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> okay. I'll find out where you are later. Um, <laughs> So what was your question? Oh, the bubble, the bubble. The bubble. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I think that we're able to put ourselves in a bubble really easily, right? Like yeah. what, what do we believe? What do the people around us believe? And this is just how it is. So where I was, um, and where I was raised, it was a lot of like, life is hard. Mm -hmm. Um, food is a struggle. Uh, when you get together with people, you eat and you drink. And, you know, it's just this perception. And I know even just trying to be fit under those circumstances is challenging because you're pushing against a lot of other people's beliefs, especially if you haven't changed your environment yet, right? So I think that just doing things, um, anything outside of what you are seeing right now or anything outside of your routine can help you gain so much more perspective. So I always have people, if you feel like maybe you're stuck, most likely you're stuck because we're not getting outside of, um, mm -hmm. you know, the place that we're in right now, our, our environment or our perceived beliefs that we're in, or, right. um, you know, maybe we haven't traveled in a long time. So sometimes I think it, it, small steps can be huge as well as sometimes you need to just shake stuff up in a major way. I love it. And it's something that I've shared a lot. I, I've noticed with a lot of entrepreneurs starting out that there's this one key concept and that's that they've lived somewhere else. They've actually gone and moved and shifted their environment. It's as though uh, creating a business or creating a new version of yourself and having the old part of you die, it's as though it can't die in your hometown. Mm -hmm. It's as though there's so many people holding on to that old party that remembered, you know, what you were like at school and primary school and, you know, all of the things that it's like, there's a part of me that just, just knows that a big part of me being able to break free was actually to leave and go and do something. I think the bubble concept is huge. So for somebody out there who knows that they, they can see through their bubble, right? And I love this concept. And they can see it. They're not being able to break through. What, break through. What's your advice? Like, what do they need to do to start really moving and shifting it up? Okay, depends on what level you would like to take. <laughs> um, because My I know listeners are intense. You want to intense? They're gonna go for it. Okay, <laughs> but it's painful that way. So they probably used to be saying, "Just jump in," but I know that's painful, right? Uh, it, it is. Sometimes so. that's the best, though, right? Like you can't just—you don't want to dip your toe into that freezing cold ocean. Like you gotta just jump if you're gonna go surfing. So <laughs> <laughs> run straight in. Um, but. So, so I love this concept. I love just jumping in, whether it's, you know, you don't necessarily have to move, but that, mm -hmm. that's actually why I started doing events is uh -huh. because my, some of my biggest shifts were at events. Oh, yeah. So just getting so far outside of what you think is normal yeah. and you become a totally different person, especially when you're uncomfortable. Like that feeling of like, oh my God, like a deer in headlights, like, <laughs> like <laughs> that, <laughs> that is actually amazing because that uh -huh. means that you are, becoming a different person. You're experiencing uh -huh. 
experiencing a whole different side of yourself. Right. Um, and I, and I think that's really beautiful. There's actually, this is, I'm so getting off on a tangent, but people, I'm going to tell you one thing that I love. Like, uh, there's this book called how to cheat on your husband with your husband. And it's about going and doing things so far outside of your uh, perceived like environment and life that you always do because you become two different people within doing new things. So it makes you attracted again and excited to be with that person. Cause it's like meeting a new person. Wow. So that's kind of like what these events are like is like you're meeting a new person you're you're trying on a whole different side of you that you didn't even know existed so if you don't throw yourself in a massive resistance you never ever know how strong you're going to be nor can you build that muscle up so for me i, I started events because i got a lot of my breakthroughs at major uh like just big events whether yeah. it was day a three day or a week long or you know one that i did recently a couple years ago was like three weeks long and it was a super wow. It's, it's hard for me to even think about it that's how challenging it was like but it was one of the best things I have ever done because you can't get that kind of growth that kind of learning that kind of like even knowing who you are without getting so much diversity from the people around you so much um, you know resistance around what you're trying to do or something new or a new experience or sitting through the uncomfortable for a week long that really changes you yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, it does. It does. And I love the fact that you love challenge and it shows right through that challenge and that drive. And I, you know, I'd like a piece of that. So I would like some more drive. So, you know, when you're looking at those things, cause a lot of times we go three weeks doing this or really jumping in and it sounds to me like you're someone that just keeps doing. So what drives you? What really keeps you going? Oh, to be totally honest, I'm so driven by not going back to where I was. Um, I'm so grateful for, for those points in my life of absolute rock bottoms and massive anxiety and panic attacks and feeling so desperately alone. Um, I'm so grateful for that because I can bring myself, like I could literally cry right now because I can bring myself right back there. Yeah. But I don't ever want to lose being able to bring myself back there. Um, I think that's what makes me understand people so well. I think that what that's what also drives me so much is knowing that we have this one life and that, you know, potentially on this planet anyway, um, that I don't want to, I don't want to die feeling like I missed out on the gifts that I was given to share with people or th this beautiful realm of amazing things that we get to experience in this lifetime of, of these diverse feelings of this, um, just the people that we can connect with and the things that we can learn. And when we really let ourselves go there and think of everything that this world has to offer and what we're actually capable of doing and knowing that we are the only block, like just a small fear or fear of being uncomfortable is the only thing that's stopping us from having just infinite blessings on this planet and connections and experiences. And uh, that's really what drives me every single day is knowing what's available. Mm -hmm. um, and wanting to live up to that potential. It's a big ask, isn't it? And, and I think it gets addictive just removing blocks. It really does. You're like, oh, look at that, get that out of the way. Go, go to 1 million, 5 million, 10 million. And I, I want to talk about business in just a second. But before I do, I, I think there's a really important, important piece there, which is, and this is something that's only just I've had to experience in the last couple of months, is it's in order for us to experience the light, we have to experience that dark. I think sometimes we're so scared about feeling negative emotions or feeling upset or feeling failure and not getting what we want that we don't allow ourselves to feel the other side of it as well because the only way to know true happiness is to know true pain and true sadness. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on, um, on failure and what are your thoughts on or, or any advice for anyone right now who's had a bit of a life crash and burn and is sitting at the bottom going, gee, this is tough. Well, I think it's like you said, I think people are scared to sit with that emotion, but if we actually sit with it, um, it, like you said, it provides the most amazing contrast. Uh, and, and no, I wasn't at rock bottom yesterday, but I had a really crappy day yesterday. Like my allergies were in like full effect. Have you ever had that where you just, I felt like death. Like I was like, why is this happening to me? I have so much to do. And I wanted to get this done and that done. And I had to cancel all these appointments. Cause it was like so crazy. And then finally it was like three in the afternoon. And I was like, you know what, why am I like, why don't I just surrender to this and like sit in it? And yes, I feel crappy and that's fine. And like, that's okay. Like this is, 
it was just really taking me completely out, right? Because I had to cancel all of these appointments I was excited about. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I was like super ticked off about it. But today I woke up and I was like, wow, actually I'm so grateful for that because it takes you on this roller coaster of emotions and it gives you this great contrast. Like I woke up today so grateful for feeling good with so much energy and even more uh -huh the stuff that I got to do. Um, so I just want to say wherever you're at, like it never ends, whether you are at a complete rock bottom right now, it, and you know what, you're going to be able to dig yourself out of it. And it's going to be one of the most beautiful, teachable moments. It's going to help you relate to other people. It's going to help you realize how grateful and lucky that we are um, to have good days, to have health, to have whatever we have. And, but I really view those as amazing, um, teachable moments where we can connect with people as well. It also helps you connect with people to understand that. And um, I was actually in a spin class today and she was talking about how feeling, just simply feeling is, um, is to be alive. To feel is to be alive. So if we stay in one emotion, you really stop feeling it because it, it becomes like your, you know, it becomes dull. It becomes like what you're used to. It becomes, um, boring to be honest like wow. if you're happy all the time sometimes that can be really boring because you're not experiencing that diverse range so no matter what it is sometimes I just want to I just I, or sometimes I just thank it no matter what it right. is so when I'm in the resistance when I'm in the pain I thank it because I know it's going to heighten my joy later right. um, I'm in sadness I know that also gets to heighten the joy like, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of beautiful things and it also brings you um just so much perspective on people and it helps you also find your purpose. And I don't know, I just think, think every single feeling and know that it's passing because it's a feeling. They don't last forever. I have this weird, weird thing that I do when I wake up in the morning and I just, uh, I literally wake up listeners and, and Laurie, I want to tell you this. I wake up, I start thinking things mm -hmm. and it came out of this place where I just knew in my soul that I needed to needed to move into gratefulness in such an easy way. And I knew, you know, manifestation, law of attraction. So I've got this weird thank you thing. And honestly, even some of the days I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, so some days I wake up and I'll have like bags under my eyes, yeah. tired, coffee, <laughs> thank you, coffee. <laughs> you know, like so fast. It is, it's about, so gratitude, gratitude, that's the foundation for everything. Like, I love that. I'm going to start using that. I'm you should. Sure. You should. It's not mine. It's not, I'm pretty sure a coach told me to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to claim it at all. And it's so true. And I think a lot of people roll eyes at the secret and law of attraction. I mean, and we're, we're in a great movie coming up, the rise up movie, which everybody should check out. I've hardly told uh, the listeners at all about our, uh, about the movie. Um, I might, I might share a little bit of that. But I just, I just think a lot of people have forgotten some of the basics you know, the real basics of your, your vibe attracts your tribe. If you want to hang out with positive people, well, be positive, you know, and then everything else that's a little bit harder for us to articulate how it shows up. So it's important. Mm. It's, important it's so important. Honestly, it's, um, you know, I do what I do because like we were talking about, it, it's, it's, I teach what I need most. So I like being constantly in my reminders because um, you know, I wake up every day and I, I need to remember just what makes me happy or, or how to connect in or that I'm not walking this earth alone and I need to remember uh -huh. how to connect in. So, um, yeah, it's like you, it's like you go to bed every night and the, the slate is wiped clean and you, ha you wake up the next day, you have to reset. Yes. No matter how great that day before was, no matter what event you went to, no matter what high you were on, no matter what great thing happened, we go to bed, it's all a race. We need to remember. So it's just, what is that stuff that makes you happy and do it? It's so easy to be happy when it's all going good. Yeah. And it's the other times when we truly sit in those other feelings that we really manifest the wrong stuff. So no, I love it. We could probably talk about spirituality for ages, but I, I would love to, I'd love to talk a little bit about your business and, and getting, uh, getting people started in their business. So you, you've got written a book and you're also, you've done most of the marketing with Isogenics, mm -hmm. which is great. And you've got workshops and a coach. Just, just run us through a little bit about your business activities and uh, what is you, you're doing in that. And then I think there'll be some gold in there that we can dig out, people wanting to actually start multiple different things. So, so what are they all? 
Okay, well, I, I had um, the fitness business first. So basically, I actually started as a personal trainer at a gym. Um, and that's kind of where the baseline all started is I said, oh my God, I can't work for people. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> so right away I was like, all right, let's start my own gym because <laughs> that was not for me. I was like, you cannot tell me when to be here. So right, so right. I was like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, got it. Right, um, right. That's what that's called, <laughs> not being able to work for people, an entrepreneur. <laughs> that's exactly. It's a, you know too, because it is like it feels like your inner temper tantrum three year old is coming out when someone tries to get you on a schedule, that's how it feels um, at, at a workplace. So then um, I was blessed enough to, uh, you know, this is something big, to talk about what you want to do with all the people in your life. Because thankfully I talked about the fact that I wanted to start my own gym all the time, like to all of my uh, clients that I had at the gym. So one of my clients was a chiropractor and she had just opened a new office and had a lower level. And she was like, Hey, I really want a trainer in there. Do you want to do this? And I was like, you know, leaped long before I was ready. I was actually struggling financially. And, and I said, well, I'd love to, but can we work out a deal? Can I, you know, book these clients and pay you off of what I'm booking? And she was great enough to be like, yes. And then we'll work out something three months from now. So you guys promote what you promote, what you want to do to everyone in your life. I have because never heard anyone say that, but listeners, I, I, it's like one of the most simple, that is so brilliant that it like, literally I am sitting here going, that's one of the easiest and best things because I've just noticed how much I've done that. Mm. That's brilliant. That's uh, absolutely it's brilliant. Like, it's everything. So I would never have uh -huh. even like, the, it wouldn't have even started if that wouldn't have happened. Right. Uh, because people want to help you. They right. really want to help. Um, so I started doing that. It started really taking off. So then obviously we worked out a great deal with that. And then um, I outgrew that space. Yes. So I ended up going uh, and getting a larger space and doing group classes, group fitness, different things like that, um, hiring some other people to come into my studio. And from there, um, that's when I actually had a client who brought Isogenics into my life. And she just had such a transformation. And I said no for six months. I literally told her, I was like, do not talk to me about this stupid network marketing thing one more time. <laughs> <laughs> at that point she's like whatever she didn't care she loved it so much here she is she she loses a hundred pounds in like nine months she wow. was lifting more weights than me she had so much energy and i was struggling with energy big time struggling with getting all my food in so that's when my eyes opened and i was like okay if i'm like completely uh kosher with every all of these ingredients in here and this is making her feel this way and i have clients over here that are struggling to cook and struggling to do this and that why am i not looking at this. So that's really when I started looking at um, network marketing, promoting something you love, right? I was already promoting fitness. I love it. I was getting asked to be paid for it. Yeah. So I was like, I'm already doing this. I'm already doing this with everything in my life. Like I'm a walking network marketer, whether it's for uh, fitness clothes or whether it's for fitness or whether whatever it is, we're natural marketers. So um, it just became a no brainer for me because all my people were struggling with the food aspect. Like even if they were working out and they were consistent, we struggling with food and things like that. So that's when uh, Isogenics really came into my life. I realized I really enjoyed doing it. I saw all the transformations throughout my people. Retention went up with all my clients. I was feeling better. And then I realized um, that it started replacing my other income. Like it was <laughs> I was like, okay, so what could we do if my husband got in on this? Who's the business guy? So then Chris and I just, honestly, we just went to town and we got really focused because, you know, we saw some income coming in and we set small goals. So first we were like, what if we could make our car payments? Awesome. We did that. So we were like, oh my God, what if we could make our mortgage payment? And right. so we worked really hard and then we did that and our mind is blown, right? Because we're like brand new to network marketing. Um... And then I think we just got so passionate about it because him and I both had huge transformations. Like he lost 30 pounds. I had so much energy. I started winning my competitions for the first time ever. Um, that's when I actually set records is the first year I was on Isogenics because I felt so good. And I think I was just loving life. Like when you feel good, you just, everything excels, right? So um, that business actually helped me build the, uh, like the mindset business right. after yeah. that. 
because I needed money to invest in events. So I don't know about you, but if you ever look at putting on events, I was like, wait a minute. So this event that I want is going to cost me $60,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next goal. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's so great that you followed your bliss and followed stuff that you love. And that's, oh. important. you know, what, Chris, it would not have worked at all if it wouldn't have been. So oh. honestly, every single thing was only because I was passionate about it. There was never one time ever that I was like, Oh, this could make me money. I should do this. <laughs> Right. I never thought that. I was like, oh my God, I love this. Could this make money? <laughs> right. So you came from service. And I think that's, that's one of the biggest things that all entrepreneurs need to know. It doesn't matter whether you love it or not, in my opinion, but it's that you're coming from service and you love the, what it's going to do for others. And that's humongous. That's absolutely humongous. Look, I could, we need to do a second show because we're running out of time. <laughs> I'm just going to let you know. I know. All right, we're going to have Lori Harder round two at some point um, soon, I think. Um, I think it'd be really cool because, you know, I love your message and, you know, we're only just starting to really get into it, I guess. And there's just, there's so much. And I, you know, I think the listeners are going to love it. So those that are listening, how do they get in contact with you? Well, there's a couple of different ways. I have my website, which is lauriharder.com. So there's some free gifts on there if you guys go there. Um, and also, I would love, love, love for you to check out earnyourhappy.com, uh, which takes you straight to my podcast on iTunes. So it is Earn Your Happy, or you can search me there. I love the title, Earn Your Happy. It's just so cool. And you know, we could deep dive into spirituality or business. Maybe we should set a topic. Uh, next time and then we can just go right into it because you know I loved it and I love you and I love what we're doing so we're in this rise up movie together listeners and we've got a there's a huge lineup in there oh my uh, god my mind is a little bit like because ah! it's all my favorite people like I know I'm pretty honored and blessed to be a part of it all you know so that's uh, how we met actually uh yes. I watched your presentation <laughs> as I said ago, how does this thing actually work <laughs> I know uh, that's going to be exciting. So listeners, make sure you watch out for that as well. We've got Tony Robbins and Aaron Huffington and Peter Kelly, Preston Smiles, Alexi Panos, Michael Bernard, Betwith, Dalai Lama. Who else is in there? Uh, uh, Marie Forleo, Jack Canfield. Um, oh, my God. Lori Harder. <laughs> yes. I know. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Um, so we will, say, we will say till next time. And uh, I'm really excited about that. And let's make sure we have a bunch more time so we can go deep diving. Uh, last message for the audience today. What are you feeling into? What am I, what am I what? What are you feeling into? That's the last message we need to share with the audience today. Uh, if you haven't done something this week that makes you feel happy or feel like you, it just takes one moment to literally schedule it and just go and do it and remember what makes you feel alive. It's easy. So just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. JFDI, the simple system to success. <laughs> Paraphrase from Laureata. Yeah. Hey, I love you so much. I love what you stand for. I love what you do. And I love these bits of time with us. And I'm serious. I'm going to hound you to get you back on this show. I like it. I'm so, in. Awesome. Uh, listeners, have an amazing day out there and live with total freedom. Free your mind, free your time, free your life. Do what matters most and smash it. This has been the Total Freedom Podcast. Learn more at ChristopherMDuncan.com. Use the hashtag, hashtag TotalFreedomTV, and Chris will answer your questions. What are you doing to create freedom today?